Hello everyone. Welcome back to class. Today we're going to be talking about the sign rule. Our objectives for this class are to state the sign rule, to differentiate between the sign ratio and the sign rule, to use the sign rule to calculate lengths and to calculate angles. So first up, let's talk about what this sign rule is. Now, the sign rule is a very important tool in mathematics, and we use it in our analysis of triangles and to calculate sides and angles. It's a very, very important tool. Uh, we can start talking about it by saying, by using a very important relationship between the side of an angle and the sign of an angle that is associated with it. So here, the length of any side Let's start with this side, A, for example, divided by the sine of the angle opposite to A, and we'd say this angle is the angle opposite to A. So this side is opposite to this angle, or this angle is opposite to this side. So the length of this side divided by the sine of the angle opposite to it is equal to any other side, B or C, divided by the sine of the angle opposite to that side. So A divided by sine A is equal to b divided by sine b is equal to c divided by sine c and so we write down the sine rule in this form a over sine a equal b over sine b is equal to c over sine c we can also invert it like this but for most instances whether you're finding a side or an angle we can use it in this form and we only use two pieces at a time so we do not use a third piece but in writing down the formula this is how it is written down we can test that a little bit when we are looking at actual numbers on a triangle. It's actually interesting that um, with the sine ratio that this actually works. That if you try it with the tangent ratio or if you try it with the cosine ratio, it doesn't work. But the, the, the length of a side divided by the sine of an angle is actually equal to any other side divided by the sine of the angle opposite to it. So, for example, if we say 1 divided by the sine of 30. Well, you probably recall that the sine of 30 is a half, so we can say 1 divided by a half, and that would give you 2. Also, we can say 2 divided by the sine of 90. And the sine of 90, if you recall, is actually equal to 1. And so we get 2 there. And the same idea happens when we try to divide root 3 divided by the sine of 60. And if you punch these in your calculators, you realize that you're actually going to get 2. So it's a very, very unique relationship for sine that exists between the length of a side and the sine of the angle opposite to it. This does not work for cosine, it does not work for tangent, but it works perfectly for sine. And so this idea brought about the, the development of the sine rule. Now, the sine rule and the sine ratio are two different things. The sine ratio, which is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, sine, opposite over hypotenuse, works only in right angle triangles. So the sine ratio is very important, but it only works in right angle triangles. The sine rule, however, works for all types of triangles whether they are right angle triangles or not. So it's a much more powerful tool than the sine ratio, which is just limited to right angle triangles. Now we can use the sine ratio to calculate lengths of sides, and we can use it to calculate the size of angles. Firstly, we're going to look at it in terms of how to calculate the length of a side. If we're going to calculate the length of a side, then we're going to need at least, we're going to need two angles in the triangle. So we need two angles and one side, one known side, that is. So we need one known side and we need two known angles, put it that way. And we write our sine rule in the form of side. So we can say 5 divided by the sine of 60 is equal to any other side, A divided by the sine of 70 and once we have it in this form we can do a cross multiplication and 
isolate our A to get our answer. So we say 5 sine 70 by cross multiplying is equal to A times the sine of 60. Once we do that, we want our A, so we can divide both sides by the sine of 60. And this gives us here A is equal to 5 sine 70 divided by the sine of 60. And that gives us pretty much 5.4 units. So the sine rule pretty much works this way, and this is how it's used, whether you're finding a side or an angle. Let's try it again, calculating another side here in this triangle. We are trying to find the side AB. We know that angles um, 45 and, and 70, these we know, and we have one known side, so the conditions are right for using the sine rule. You must always check that the conditions are right, so you must have two known angles and one known side if you want to use the sine rule to calculate a length. So we start by writing it down, 290, that's the side, over the sine of the angle, which is 45, is equal to any other side. We want AB, which is um, AB here, over the sine of 70. As a check for your answers, you might want to look at the numbers and see. Notice that 45 is a smaller angle than 70. Also notice, notice that 45, the side opposite, opposite to it is 290 meters, which will mean that when you calculate the length of AB, your answer should be a lot bigger than 290 meters. As a check, it's important to look at your answers. Just in, in, in the case that you make an error, you would know. So we do our cross multiplication again. And we say 290 multiplied by the sine of 70 is equal to AB multiplied by the sine of 45. And since we want our AB, we're going to divide by sine 45. So AB, well, let's divide it here. Sine 45, remember sine 45 is a number. And therefore AB, let's get rid of that. AB is equal to 290 sine 70 divided by sine 45. You would type this into your calculator and be careful about how you type it in. And once you type it in, you should get um, 385.4. Also remember to put your calculator in degrees because you're working with angles in degree mode. All right, so this is how we use the sine rule to calculate the length of a side. Now, what if we're going to use the sine rule to calculate the size of an angle? Here, if you're going to calculate the sine of an angle, you will need two known sides. So you will need a side, a side, and you need one known angle. So side, side, and one known angle. This is, this is, this is the condition that is needed to calculate the size of an angle. Now let's find the size of the angle theta that's marked here. We're going to write out the sine rule in the very same way. So 8.1 over the sine of theta or divided by the sine of theta is equal to 10.3 divided by the sine of 85. We're going to do the regular cross multiplication here. So we're going to have 8.1 sine 85, and that would be equal to 10.3 times the sine of the angle, the angle theta. We want sine theta, so we're going to divide both sides by 10.3. And that tells us that the sine of theta is equal to 8.1 sine 85 over 10.3. Notice that this is going to give us the sine of the angle. So when you, when you do this division on your calculator, ensure that you write down your decimal places to three places at least. The sine, the cosine, and the tangent are very susceptible to small changes in decimal. So you need to be, make sure that you stretch your decimal places to at least three to make sure that you don't have that huge of an effect on your answer. So we're going to write down, when you 
punch this in your calculator, write it down to three decimal places, we get um, 0 0.783. Uh, 783, I wrote 8. I wrote our numbers backwards, 783, all right. And now, this is the sign of the angle. This doesn't tell us what the angle is. But we know how to calculate the angle. We can use the inverse sine function. So theta would be equal to the sine inverse of 0 0.783. And that would give us exactly 51.5 degrees. Again, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. And so we, we go through our calculation in the pretty much the same way. But having reached this point, Remember, this is not the angle that we need. This is the sine of the angle that we need. And so to find the angle, we need to use the sine inverse, which is the inverse sine function. So you'd press shift sine or second function sine on your calculator and use the 0 0.783 to get your answer here. Let's look at another question. And in this question, there, there is a case where we have something that we call the ambiguous case of the sine rule um the ambiguous case and this happens because of a relationship in sine as well where we have the sine of for example um 30 degrees and the sine of 150 degrees the sine of 30 degrees is a half and likewise the sine of 150 degrees is also a half so if you're asked to find the angle, say we want to find the sine inverse of a half, then there's an issue as to which angle are we talking about. Are we talking about the 30 degree angle or are we talking about the 150 degree angle? But notice something that the 30 plus 150 gives you 180. And because of that, we have that the if two angles if two angles are let's write that down are supplementary because that is what it means that that is what this means supplementary to each other so a and b equal 180 degrees then we're going to have that sine of a is equal to the sine of b of course one is going to be um one is going to be an obtuse angle and one is going to be an acute angle. So in this case here, we're told that the, the we are to calculate TSW. TSW is this angle here. And we are told that TSW is bigger than 90. So if it's bigger than 90, we want to find the obtuse form of the angle. So let's do that. First, we're going to write it down, nine, divide by sine t s w is equal to 7.5 divided by the sine of 52 and we can do a regular cross multiplication with this so we have 9 sine 52 is equal to 7.5 um, times the sine of t s w now we can find the, the sine of TSW by dividing both sides by 7.5. Let's do that. And we will have now that the sine of TSW is going to be equal to 0 0.946. Once you type that in your calculator, you should, you should get this response, 0 0.946. And so now we can find TSW by using the inverse sine. So we can say the angle TSW is equal to the sine inverse of 0 0.946. But once we do that, you will get the angle 71 degrees, approximately 71 degrees. Now, the question said clearly that the angle that we're looking for is bigger than 90. 71 is not bigger than 90. Um, 71 is actually less than 90 degrees. It's an acute angle. So in order to find the angle that we need, because we are aware of this relationship, that if two angles are supplementary, they will have the same sign. Then to find our answer, what we do is that we subtract the answer that we get from the 
180 degrees. So we say our answer will be equal to 180 degrees minus 71 degrees. And that will give us an answer of 109. So the correct answer for this question would be 109 degrees. Notice that um, when you find a sign, however, your calculator will give you the smaller of the two angles. It always does that. It is programmed to give you the smaller number. We call that the primary value. But read your question carefully and notice, and if you come across a situation like this where it says that the question itself needs the larger angle, then you know exactly which one you need to calculate. This problem doesn't come up with cosine and tangent, but it is unique to sine where it has this ambiguous case where two angles, as long as they're, they're supplementary, they will have the same sign. So once that situation comes up, you notice that your answer should be bigger than 90. You get your answer and it's not bigger than 90 then you should do the subtraction 180 minus whatever that you, you got and that will give you the answer that we need and this is how we use the sine rule to calculate lengths and